Hi, I'm Dr. Russell Friedman, Alterna Health Solutions, and the founder of QSM3. And today we're going to do a short little video on how to move a patient from different headpiece positions and also different leverage points, flipping somebody over and so forth and so on. And just we're just going to kind of walk through that process, okay? So I just took care of Dr. Yoshi and we'll get him on the table. But what happens is he started out before we worked on him, right a half inch short leg, right 22 pounds, posterior seven, right two. This is a stick figure that we use in the office and it says it's got a right bow and left head tilt. So looking at this before we even start, we know a lot of information. We have a patient that's leaning off to the right and bowing right. Okay? That's bad. Okay? He should be bowing left. His head is tilting left, which means his head is taking all the misalignment. So this is a big stress point. We also know that we're going to have the right side up on the first position, and then if it clears out and we get the bow out and decompress it, then we're going to go left side up and we're going to get the head tilt out. Okay? So this is what happened. On the post, I had him right side up. All right? I drop the headpiece down, I close the left anterior quadrant because I was accessing the left side with a right side up by dropping it down. The pelvis on the left side is anterior and that means I use superior torque and I'm going to show you in just a moment but what happened was is right a quarter, posterior seven, right five and right one and that's where he went. So a lot of stuff reduced, we still had some rotation left and we still had some head tilt to the left, okay? So there's two things that are indicating that I, have to, that I have to turn the person over. The posterior five, which means he's not completely decompressed, and in this process and in this protocol is if we have to complete compression, decompression. So we have the right side up with the down head piece, so we flip him over, left side up with a down head piece, all right? And this time, I'm gonna close the RP quadrant, okay? So, but the beautiful thing is we get a two for one or almost a three for one out of this whole thing, all right? What we do is by taking him left side up and dropping the head, head piece out on the, second, on the second position, the post two, is we take care of the head, the force comes around and takes care of the weight, and we also take care of the, uh, the bow as well, possibly. So head, uh, body weight, and the bow itself and the decompression. It's almost a four for one, okay? And after I did that, so the next position is a left up, head piece down, and that takes the head tilt, the weight, the bow, and also the, the uh, dysfunction in the pelvis, okay? So let's go show and do that, and then we'll walk through what the leverage points are. So now we're going to go through the patient placement and talk about the leverage and talk about the torque and so forth and so on. The key to decompression is making sure the occipital ridge, the bottom of it, the most inferior aspect, is on the inferior aspect of the headpiece. You do not want the neck, C0, C1, on the support because you'll just be buckling the atlas, all right? So we make sure of that. We also are going to make sure the head drops down, all right? Now, he was a right posterior. Now, by dropping the head, I'm accessing the left side. So where is the pelvis on the left side? It's anterior. So we're going to tuck the chin. So now we've had the headpiece down, the skull down, and the chin tucked. We're accessing the left anterior. I am going to push this pelvis, because this pelvis is the up pelvis. It's posterior. And I'm going to push it forward. Now, watch what I'm doing with my hand and my hand, is I'm tractioning this. I'm just holding this here, hand here making sure it doesn't move in the down anterior position. See this motion right here? I keep it here, and then I traction him this way. This tractioning, this tensegrity, and this pushing allows tension in the system so that the force travels down the path, mirror image pelvis, and allows that tensegrity, that tension, to allow that force, the least amount of force, to travel a rigid, through a rigid body. So then what I did is my leverage points here is because he was right posterior, is I'm coming P to A, P to A, P to A, P to A, and I to S, I to S, and I to S, and it looks like this. P to A, P to A, P to A, P to A, I to S, I to S, I to S, I to S. All right? So you got to be able to go back and forth here. The contact of my hand on him is P to A and I to S because he had a right posterior. Okay? However, the place where we're opening up to and the way we're setting up the chain is the force to come around is left anterior on the other side. The force is coming around and allowing the system to open, dealing with that anterior pelvis on that left side. We're tractioning the up pelvis and the chin, so it's a left anterior quadrant with P to A and I to S. Then what we did is I got him up, I checked him, and we still had some rotation in there, and we still had some head tilt, 
on the left side, so we have a left head tilt, so I want a left side up now and drop the head out, and I get this two, three, four for one here. I get the weight coming around, the head coming around, pelvis unwinding because he still had some rotation, so we're still going through a decompression by a down head piece, and that's what Yoshi's going to do is flip okay, over. So now we flipped him over only for educational purposes because I always check after each position on the digital device because you may clear him out. You may not need this position. But we already went through the process, so I'm just showing you this. Okay, so now we've got him left side up. Now we're dropping the head out because we're decompressing. We're allowing the force to come around. So we're getting the skull out. We're getting the force to come around and kick that right weight that was still there. And also the last piece that we're looking at is he still had some twist in the pelvis. And that is, the, that is what's driving this right now. The head is not driving this. The pelvis is driving this. Because we cannot do anything until we get the rotation out of the pelvis, which means we've decompressed them. Then we can go to the skull. Then we can go to the frontal. Okay. So now we're going to drop the head. Well, if we're dropping the head and we're accessing now the right side, we're setting up a closed kinetic chain around the right side, where is the pelvis on the right side? And remember, it was posterior. So it's, it's a drop and a tilt. So now I'm accessing the right posterior, okay? His pelvis on the left upside here is anterior. So what I'm doing is I'm tractioning it back this way and I'm securing this. So notice how I'm holding this here. I'm not pushing down on this. I'm stabilizing this, but tractioning the pelvis. And what that does is create the mirror image of the pelvis, the tensioning so very light energy could travel through and the least amount of energy can clear the resistance. And then what we're going to do is because the left side is anterior, which means the right side is posterior, I'm going to come here and I'm going to go A to P, 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 and I to S, I to S, I to S, I to S. I to S, I to S, and what's my torque? My torque is, because I'm accessing the other side and the pelvis is posterior on the right, it's inferior torque. So inferior torque, okay? Inferior torque. And he would come up and then we would check him and he was clear. Okay, that's it for today.